Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we are designing this discount countdown banner using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. In the previous video, I showed you how to design this using HTML and CSS. Now in this video, we will add the functionality using JavaScript. So let's get started. Right here is our source code and if you go to the HTML file, here we can see that we have already linked the main.js file. So let's go ahead and start with the functionality. The first thing we will do is we will add the functionality of this close button. So when we click on this close button, this banner should disappear. So for the close button, if you go to the HTML, here we can see we have a division with the class of close btn. So let's go to our main.js file and let's reference that. Let's tap const close btn equals document.query selector. And here let's type discount container close btn. And when we click on this close button, we need to hide the discount container. So here we have this main container division, which has a class of discount container. So we need to reference this as well. So here let's tap const discount container equals document dot query selector discount container. All right now let's go ahead and add an event listener to this close button. So let's tap close btn dot add event listener and let's listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here. And when we click on this close button, we need to hide this discount container. So let's tap discount container dot style dot display and we'll just set the display to none. Right now let's go back to our website and if I click on this close button, we can see that the banner disappears. Now if you refresh this page, it comes back. That's because uh, the browser doesn't know that we had clicked this close button. So for that we need to add a cookie inside the browser and we need to tell it that the close button was clicked and uh, then the browser will know that the close button was clicked and uh, it will not show this banner again. Now we can set a time frame for how long a cookie should stay in the browser. For this example I'll just set the cookie for 24 hours. So let's go back and let's write the code for the cookie. So we'll create a function called set cookie and for this function we will pass three parameters the first one will be the name of the cookie so let's name it discount closed and then we need to have the value of the cookie i'll just set it to true and then we will have the duration of the cookie so i'll just set it to 24 hours right now let's create this function so let's tap const set cookie and here we will add the three parameters i just call them name value and duration now let's create an arrow function. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the current time. So let's store that in a variable. I'll just type const and I'll just name it expires. And we'll just set it to new date. So this will give us the current time. So if I just console.log it. And if you go back to our website and if you go to the inspector. And if you go to console and let's click on this close button. And now we can see that in the console we have the current date and time displayed over here. Now what we need to do is we need to add 24 hours to this time. So we need to get the time in a different format. So if we go back and here if I just type expires dot get time. Now if you go back and if I click on this close button. And now here we can see that we have this time in milliseconds. So this is basically from a specific date and from that date till this current time we have this many milliseconds passed. Now what we can do is we can just add the number of milliseconds for 24 hours in our case. So let's go back to our code and here we can just delete the console log and uh, here let's type expires dot set time. So this is a function in JavaScript and here we will first of all get the time in milliseconds. So let's type expires dot get time and then we need to add the number of milliseconds for this many hours. So in our case, it is 24 hours. So let's type plus duration. That's what we are calling it over here. And then we need to type times 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. And then in a minute, we have 60 seconds. So let's type times 60. And then in a second, we have 1000 milliseconds. So let's type 1000. So this will give us the milliseconds for 24 hours after the current time. Right now let's write the code for the cookie. So let's type document dot 
cookie equals and let's add it in back ticks and uh, here let's type dollar symbol curly braces because this is a variable and here let's type name and then let's type equals and we will set it to the value of the name which is uh, true so we are calling it value so let's type dollar symbol curly braces value and after that we need to add a semicolon and then we need to type expires equals and then we need to type this variable name expires so let's type dollar symbol curly braces expires and we need to change this into a different format so let's type to utc string and then we need to type semicolon path equals forward slash right now let's save this and let's go back to our website so let's click on this close icon and now the banner has disappeared so let's open the inspector now to see the cookies you have to go over here to application and then in cookies you have this website and here we can see we have this cookie called discount closed right now the next thing we need to do is we need to display the banner only when we don't have this cookie stored so for now i'll just delete this cookie and let's go back to our code and let's add an if condition over here so just tap if document dot cookie dot index of and here we need to add the cookie name so let's tap discount closed equals true and we have to see whether this is not equal to minus one so this line of code basically says that the cookie is available so if the cookie is available we need to hide the discount container so let's tap discount container dot style dot display equals none right now let's go back to our website and let's click on this close icon and we can see that the banner has disappeared now let's refresh this page and the banner is being displayed once again so let's go back and let's see what's the problem so here we can see that we have this typo we didn't type a d over here so let's tap discount closed and now let's go back and uh, now if you refresh this page the banner is not being displayed but if you go back to the console and uh, if we go to application and if we just delete this cookie and now if you refresh this page we can see that the banner is displayed once again so the cookie is working all right now let's write the code for displaying the countdown timer so let's go back to our code now the first thing we need to do is we need to reference all the elements so if you go to the html file here we can see we have this division of the class of days and then we have hours minutes and seconds so we need to reference all these elements because we need to change these values over here i just change this to zero right now let's go back to the main.js file and let's reference all those elements so let's tap const days equals document dot query selector countdown timer days and i'll just duplicate this three more times and for the second one let's change this to hours and then for the third one let's change this to minutes and then for the fourth one let's change this to seconds right now we need to update the value every one second so let's create a set interval so i'll just tap let and i'll just name it t equals set interval and for the interval i'll just type 1000 which is one second right now we need to write the code for the timer over here before that let's go ahead and create a variable for the end date so here i'll just create a const and i'll just name it countdown date and we'll just set it to new date and here we need to add the date when the countdown should end so i'll just add a random date over here so i'll just type 2023 20, t and for the time let's type 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. and then we need to type dot get time so this will store the exact time of this date into this countdown date variable right now let's scroll down and uh, here let's write the code let's create a variable for the current time so let's type let now equals new date and we need to type dot get time because we need to get in milliseconds and now we need to calculate the difference between the current time and this specified time over here so let's type let and i'll just name it distance equals countdown date minus now so this will give us the difference of this variable and this countdown date variable over here right now we need to get the values of days hours minutes and seconds so we need to get those values from this distance variable so let's type let days value equals and here we need to type distance divided by 
and uh, here we need to type 1000 which is milliseconds times 60 which is seconds times 60 which is minutes times 24 which is hours and we will use the floor value of this uh, result so let's type math dot floor and let's add all of this inside math dot floor and let's also convert this into a string so let's type to string right now let's create the variable for the hours so let's type let hours value equals math dot floor and here we need to type distance and we need to add this modulo operator and then we need to type 1000 milliseconds times 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours and we need to divide all of this with a different value so let's add all of this inside parenthesis and let's type divided by 1000 times 60 times 60 so this will give us the hours value now this modular operator means that it will give us the remainder of this division as the result not the quotient so let's type let minutes value equals and we need to add almost the similar code so let's copy this code from here and here we'll also add dot to string right now let's copy this code from here and let's paste it over here for the minutes value and for the minutes we can just remove the 24 from here right now let's write the code for the seconds so i'll just copy this line of code from here and let's paste it down here and here we need to type seconds value and here we need to change this to 1000 times 60 and here we need to just change this to 1000 and for the minutes you have to change this to 1000 times 60 so this is going to be the code right now let's see whether this works so here we have already referenced the elements days hours minutes and seconds so those are from this html file and those are these elements over here so let's add these values to these elements over here so let's type days dot in our html equals days value and hours dot in our html equals hours value minutes dot inner html equals minutes value and seconds dot inner html equals seconds value but now we also need to add an if condition for when this timer ends so when this countdown date reaches we need to hide this uh, discount container from here and we also need to stop this interval so let's type if let's type distance is less than zero so here we can see we are calculating the distance and if the distance is less than zero then it means that the countdown date has reached so here we need to type clear interval and we need to add the name of the interval which is t and then we need to hide the discount container so let's type discount container dot style dot display equals none right now let's go back to our website and let's see whether the timer is working all right so here we can see that the timer is working all right let's wait for this to reach zero let's see whether this changes to 14. and we can see that everything is working all right now the last thing we need to do is when we have just a single digit we need to add a zero to the end or to the left side so let's go back and uh, we can add that pretty easily so we can just type dot pad start so this will add an element to the start here we need to add two arguments the first one is the max length and the second one is the string that should be added so for the length let's type two and for the string we'll just type zero so it will add zero for every one digit number so now if you go back to our website here we can see that it says zero one instead of just one let's add the same for all the other values so i'll just copy this from here and let's paste it over here and let's do the same for minutes value and seconds value now let's go back to our website and we can see that everything is working all right so that's basically how you can create a discount countdown timer using html css and javascript so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day